Well, it's probably been a while since you've heard that song, hey? Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back to Space Engineers. So in this video, I wanted to do something a little atypical, and that's talk about the survival series behind the scenes. The one with me, Captain Shack, and Wasted Space? Yeah, that one. So a lot of you have been asking about the survival rover and mobile base featured in the series, and I've asked, why haven't I released it? Well, that's because they were in the series and I didn't want to give away too much. But now that season one has ended and they are no longer going to be used as set props, most likely, I thought it was far past due time to give you guys a closer look and talk a little bit about the construction of them, the ideas behind them, because they were constructed in a time uh, that I didn't film and that was because there was a, a time jump. That's because I was away. All right, so to begin, we need to begin with the original rover, which is the survival rover that you guys saw at the beginning of season one when I was all alone by myself. This guy really informed the big guy that came later. So let's talk about that first. Now, you'll notice one of the, the primary features of this little rover is that it is very, very minimalistic, and that was intentional. I was very much inspired by NASA's Curiosity rover that's on Mars and other NASA creations, which are basically made to reduce weight and material cost because you need to lift things on a rocket. Now, this thing isn't going off into space, but I didn't have very many materials, so I thought it'd be wise to try to keep it as minimalistic as possible. Plus, uh, it ended up looking pretty darn cool in the end. So, you'll notice that all the real functional bits are in the center. Now, the iteration I'm showing you is the last version of it before I crashed it off a cliff. And this is the one that actually has the medium-sized container in the middle. Originally, it had no container. And I think it had small ones, but pretty much no, no storage capacity. And then I ended up adding one on the end later, which was a, a bad decision because when it was full, it ended up tipping the whole rover backwards, which wasn't good news. Though, you could get stuff out of the big connector. You'll notice, though, that these little pipes here that connect up the medium container will not be able to get big components back to the connector. And this is an issue if you're connecting things up to a base, say, and you want to do it quickly by transferring it directly into the vessel. You'll have to do it by hand in this version. Or build a connector on the top and connect, you know, do a connector from the base above it, which is actually what I did with potatoes. But I took that off because it kind of, I hate to say it looks bad. So I just put it on the back again and piped up the sides. Anyway, so yeah, all the all the functional bits are in the center, but they play a dual purpose in that they connect both sides of the chassis. So the wheels are actually correct uh, connected directly through the batteries. That doesn't there's nothing below them. That reduced the amount of materials I, I needed to actually build the structure of this pretty uh, pretty substantially. And and that is really where uh, the the this base actually which we'll talk about later uh, got its design from. So now let's actually get inside of it and talk about the functionality of it. So you'll notice that there there are solar panels on, on rotors and you'll say, oh my gosh, you are so daring morphologist, how, you could, how could you do that? Well, there's an actual reason behind it. Not only do rotors give you the advantage of being able to angle your, here I actually have to go into remote control because this thing, it's actually a seat, not a not a cockpit, and that actually, again, another cost savings by reducing materials. Uh, remote control and, and passenger seats actually cost less than a cockpit. Uh, food for thought for building your own survival rover. But anyway, back to the, ro uh, the, the rotors. Now, they operate on these three programmed bits down in the lower part of the screen, the hotkeys. The first one reverses the direction, the second one turns them on and off, and the third one locks them down. The lockdown part is important because back when I made this, you couldn't lock rotors. Also, I think it probably is still better because it will lock them to the chassis and make them very stable. So I'll unlock it now, and I will turn the rotors on and reverse the direction. Now, notice the bars on the bottom of them. Okay, now I'll stop it. Look, now I'm getting absolutely optimal charge on this little tiny rover, and that means that this thing can pretty much stay out indefinitely charging whenever, whenever I need to, and it really does run forever. I've never had to really charge it up too much on the show. I, I did leave it plugged in just just for safety's sake, just because you know, just in case I was gone and I really wanted to keep it charged up. But to be honest, it, it never really ran out of battery. I probably could have run it on solar the entire time. The second functionality of it, actually, you'll notice that there are lights at the top of it. Those are spotlights to give me work lights at night. And I actually used that in one episode to construct a tower, and it was very dark, so those helped out a lot, especially when the lighting was much darker than it is now. And the third and most important functionality of it is something I will demonstrate now. So let me switch directions on this and let them close on back down. All right. And while we're going to do this, 
Uh, I'll point out that this thing has a, an antenna and an ore detector as well because I did need to use this as a survival rover to find ore veins, which I would mark on the GPS. So now to show you why these things are so useful, these solar panels with, on rotors. I'm going to try to flip this thing over, and here we go. Whoa, that was probably very extreme. That was extremely extreme. <laughs> and it's as easy as... Oh, there we go. Okay, that just took a second. And you'll notice that I am flipping back on over. That flip over was a little bit too extreme and it looks like it knocked off my antenna, but not to worry. Everything else is working just fine. My vessel is in perfect working order, aside from the lack of an antenna. Let me put the parking brake on. I think as things will come back down, I'll expedite that process. Come on. And they're back down, I'll lock them down and parking brake off and we're gonna get back over to the survival rover and we'll talk about sorry the survival mobile base and we'll talk about that and uh, why i designed that the way it was all right now we're back at the mobile ba mobile base and we're ready to talk about why this thing is designed the way it is now you'll remember back from when i said uh, oh, i was talking about this rover that it became uh the basically the the predecessor to this one it really informed the design and i'll show you why if we look underneath this thing because remember, it is a survival rover. I needed to have stuff for survival, like a refinery, an assembler, and what have you, to get this thing to really be able to function as a, as a base. So everything, like all the very important bits, actually become the main central spine of, of the rover. There, there's really no connecting bits, no structural connecting bits, except for, I guess you could call those, those like half blocks up there as connecting bits. Those are really... Uh, basically for looks nothing functional the the refinery is basically what's holding this thing together as well as uh, those the the modules on the other side to increase its efficiency so that really you can see now the, sort of the connection the the idea the con continuation of the idea between the small survival rover and the mobile base that it's it's pure functionality minimalistic in in its construction again because i was going off of basically deconstructing my blown up base and uh, using bits of the Constitution. So I was really low on parts. Another thing you'll notice is that it has batteries and solar panels. So again, and just like the little rover, this thing runs completely on solar energy. And yes, in the show, I never had to charge this thing up. There's no hidden, uh, there's, there's no hidden reactor or anything on this guy. It's completely solar powered. Some of the other really important bits, of course, are uh, the, you know, the, I already talked about the assembler and the refinery, but the backup batteries and the containers to store things, but also, you remember from the series actually, I have a medical room, which helps me heal myself up, but also is, is safely protected inside of this nicely crafted little space. These doors are not uh, vanilla, this whole thing is vanilla except for this, but I, I felt I, I needed some sort of door system that I could put on here that wasn't like the, uh, the stock ones, which are like halfway through the block, that those don't want to work. So I added these into the game. Uh, so that I could have something to close thing, this thing up. And, and yeah, it, it served as a, as a really nice little enclosed space. Now let's talk about the really exciting bit. Um, the exciting two bits, I should say. So this thing in the series actually flew, and there's a real functional reason for that. You see, running over trees in this game seems to make the game blow your stuff up. So if I ran over any of these trees, this thing would be cut in half, and therefore I needed a way to get around, and thus I added turbines in one direction. This makes the thing fly kind of like a really clumsy helicopter, but if you remember in the series, here in this clip, I actually have, ooh, look at that, it's the series. Uh, it works extremely well if you know how to fly it. And that actually, you know, I, I was flying in third person too from these shots, it was very difficult. Anyway, back to, back to looking at the rover. Also on the top, you'll notice that there's a little connector. What could this be for? Actually, this is for potatoes. This is the potato slot. I actually use this in the series. Logistically, it made a lot of sense because Potatoes could come back from a mining mission and directly deposit the stuff into a storage container and I can immediately refine that and assemble it into parts for building other things. And one of the things I built, actually, was this quad gun. Yes, this is probably the coolest thing you guys are waiting for me to talk about. The quad gun is a small ship basically uh, connected to a large ship through a rotor. So the small rotor head on a top, a large rotor head, you really can't do this in survival, sadly. So this had to be, this part at least, had to be done in creative. But when I went back into, uh, after I connected this rotor head, I actually went back into survival and finished this thing up uh, with these really nice ISM guns, which are again aftermarket. But I used the uh, same concept as, as the whole rover, the little rover, minimalistic. 
but functional. So it works on uh, basically a remote control. So when you get inside the passenger seat here, you have to go into the remote control, into the control panel here, and then you can turn this thing around. Now, how this thing works is actually pretty simple. Uh, don't mind the timer blocks. They serve no actual purpose. I wanted to time the guns actually earlier to, to give it a cool effect, but that didn't end up working out. But basically how this works is that the rotors are dead, so they're not actually doing anything but offering resistance in a pivot point. If you go to the rotors here, you can actually see the braking torque is set. That's the really important thing here. The braking torque really has to be tuned to the weight of your of your turret, basically how heavy it is, so that it stops rotating when you rotate it. And the, the gyroscopes that you see are, are what's doing the rotation. Now, unfortunately, and, and this is really unfortunate because I, I wish you could do this. If somebody were piloting this mobile base and I were on this on this uh, turret here, it would not work, sadly, because it would read it as one ship and it would say that I can't use the gyroscopes. So unfortunately, as it is, without a script, without some modding, you can't do two-man in vanilla. But if you do a, a script, you can do it. Or if you're by yourself, like I was in the series, it works just fine. And man, is this thing powerful. So yep, that's how that thing works. Hope it helps you to build your own little version of the survival rover. But last but not least, I want to talk about the suspension of the survival base and the survival rover because those are kind of a really important part of this and has to do with the original as well. But you'll notice that this thing has six wheels and not four. Now, the reason for this is that the survival base is actually very, very long. If it didn't have this third set of tires in the center, it would bottom out when you're going over hills. And as you probably know in Space Engineers, just bottoming out a little bit can actually end up destroying whatever whatever it is. So it, that helps mitigate that issue. But additionally, it offers grip. Now, you'll notice that the center tire is a little bit higher than the front and back, and that's for a good reason. That's only supposed to be there to add basic support. If it were to be touching the ground just the same as the back and front, it actually ends up restricting a little bit the way the thing moves, the way it turns. But when you go over large bumps or when you're going uphill very quickly, it does engage in the ground and it does help out pretty significantly. Now this is a really, really basic guide to setting up a six wheeled rover. There's a lot more to it than that and I'll leave that sort of guide to another video. But if you do want to see something like that, let me know in the comment section. I'll be sure to put something together to show you how you can build your own version of a mobile base or survival rover. So if you want to see the base or survival rover, I'll be putting that in the description of the video. Otherwise, let me know what you thought of the video. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? I do want to know and I will be reading your comments. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you guys next time.